Well, hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. I'm Richard and this is Lap of the World. We were recently invited by Revmatch Track Days to join them down at Tunerfest, Florida for the inaugural installment of what they hope will be a recurring event at the FIRM, the Florida International Rally and Motorsports Park. We've been to the FIRM before and had a good time, so I said sure and packed a bag for a short weekend in the Sunshine State. Tuner Fest, in this context, is a series of events put on by the folks at Stance Down Low with support from a number of sponsors and vendors. Looking at their calendar, these normally lean towards car show or pop-up festival style events, but a few definitely involve some manner of motorsport, be it drag, drift, or now circuit racing. On this particular occasion, they partnered with Revmatch Track Days to deliver some hot laps of the firm alongside the hard parking and heavy base of the car show and vendor areas. I haven't been to many of this type of combo event, so I wasn't really sure what to expect. I arrived at the firm morning of to some familiar track day scenes of people unloading or emptying cars, the usual tech inspection and check-in process, and a driver's meeting. All pretty normal track day fare, except for the presence of some accompanying beats courtesy of a rotation of DJs throughout the day. The forecast had looked very iffy, so I had packed my previously reviewed weather pod since I'd be flying solo, and absent any chase vehicle into which I could throw things to keep them dry. It again performed admirably, protecting camera gear and clothing from the occasional passing shower. These guys don't sponsor me, but if you want one, there's an Amazon affiliate link in the description where you can buy one, such that I'll get a little kickback from the purchase. Out on track, the tarmac was about where we'd left it from early 2020, so other than tiptoeing around some puddles in the first two sessions, it didn't take long to remember what I was doing. After all, I had my own how-to video to reference. It's a good watch if you plan to visit the firm. Apologies for the uh, self-promotion there. Between the intermittently moist conditions and playing firm taxi for some of the organizers, sponsors, and vendors, I wasn't out to set any records today, but here's a lap in the low minute 20s range for a reminder of what it looks like. Your lap of the firm starts with the last turn, turn 10 if done right, with a little bit of a late apex here, will set you up to go full throttle with a constant steering angle all the way out to your track out point and entry into turns two and three. You want to sacrifice a little bit on the entry to two so you can maximize your acceleration through three and on to the second longest straight in the place. Turn four, you could accomplish with a lift or a uh, small brake, maybe flat out in a low horsepower car, but it is the fastest turn on the track. Turns five and six are uh, not quite 90s. You can use a little bit of curb here and track all the way out, maximize your track width there and uh, you probably can take those faster than you think after your first few laps. In the S's, you want to use this curb and this curb, but you want to stay off of that curb and that curb before braking and then taking a very late apex to maximize your acceleration onto the straight towards turn eight. I will admit that I tiptoe through turn eight a little bit here. It is the only wall really in the whole place. Uh, but you can carry more speed here than you think. Uh, you want to be a little ginger on entry, but you can really start picking it up because it is banked. Uh, after you clip on the uh, outside there, you get a nice late apex on the way out. Use all the curb, but watch the track does drop off on the outside, putting you back onto the front straight or the main straight, uh, which will get you up to your maximum speed. Coming off the track, by midday there were an array of vendors and food options available. Last time I was at the firm, I remember I had to settle for a gas station sandwich. This time, though, I was treated to some pizza freshly ovened on the back of a K-truck by ND Pizza. Definitely an upgrade. I then washed that down with some fresh squeezed berry lemonade from Lemon Delight before taking a walk through the vendor and car show area. By Stance Down Low's standards, the show attendance was a little light. Probably a combination of it being the first of their events in the area, as well as the aforementioned iffy forecast that called for way more rain than actually materialized. Those that were there provided a nicely eclectic cross-section from some big money Euro builds, courtesy of event sponsor Lake County Euros, to some fun Japanese nostalgia, and everything from lightly modded to over-the-top show cars. These were surrounded by several of the event vendors and sponsors like Max Speeding Rods, Tuner 47, and Miniature Car World. Back on the other side of the fence, other than the lack of many drifters, the track continued to buzz, rumble, and scream with activity. This was an HPDE-style event, so was divided into run groups by driver experience from the novice group playing lead follow with their instructors to the advanced group, in which you might find some of those same instructors driving solo for the fun of it, or in a couple of cases as a shakedown session prior to a race elsewhere. 
Personally, I enjoyed my five eight tenths sessions, giving rides and occasionally finding someone on track to play with. I was particularly looking forward to some fun cat and mouse with Wendell, AKA Downforce Dell. He just bought this FK8 Civic Type R as a track toy and was using the firm as a shakedown for a NASA event. A well-driven CTR should be able to keep pace with a stock-ish NSX, and he was definitely making a good effort at doing so, at least until our fun got spoiled by a yellow and black situation so the track marshals could retrieve a wayward Miata. Maybe next time. In a case of giving points for creative use of available time, the dearth of drifters led to some empty track blocks. Revmatch decided to fill one of those blocks with an impromptu track cross, essentially an autocross using one of the chicanes that wasn't in the normal layout in combination with the first few turns that were in view of the spectator areas. As with the cone-strewn version, cars ran one at a time against the clock. The initial shoebox sector was particularly dusty since it hadn't been used for the normal track sessions, so it rewarded a tidy line more than aggression. We did four or five runs and it was a tight race between myself and a spicy NC Miata for top honors, but we got the job done on our fourth run. So back in the garage, having had a week to digest my thoughts and clean the car up a little bit, uh, what do I think of TunerFest Florida and the other TunerFest events? I would, I would do it again. Uh, has it been my normal bread and butter? No. But I think this type of event, mixing the show and go crowds, if you will, it does accomplish something that you don't see in a more siloed environment of just a track day or just a car show, and that is bringing people together whose automotive enjoyments on, you know, automotive enjoyment Venn diagram circles wouldn't usually overlap that much. Uh, so you have conversations that you wouldn't otherwise have if you were only at a track day or only at a car show. Uh, so I thought that was pretty cool. And uh, do check out uh, RevMatch Track Days. I want to thank them for inviting me down. They normally operate kind of in the Midwest. You can find a link to them down below for some of their regional uh, and maybe extra regional occasionally track day needs. Uh, also, thanks to Stance Down Low for hosting the event. I know they put in a lot of work to get a bunch of vendors and sponsors and everything to, you know, organize everything in general. Thanks to the management at the firm, who both in 2020 and now have, are generous as always. And uh, <laughs> thanks to the folks at uh, Miniature Car World for a very cool and collectible souvenir NSX here. I do appreciate that. You can find, again, a link to them down in the description. And uh, lastly, I was uh, selected by one of the event sponsors, uh, Max Speeding Rods as the uh, <laughs> driver of the fest. <laughs> now, I don't, I wasn't out to try and win anything, and I probably was not turning the fastest laps out there uh, all day, although I did win the little track cross event they put on. But um, I probably had the, the busiest right seat. Uh, I think I was only on my own for part of one session, uh, and then the rest of the time there was, you know, somebody hopefully having a good time uh, <laughs> riding around the track with me. Uh, and I'll I consider that an, uh, an exercise in uh, investment in, in, in furthering the hobby. So before I ramble any further, though, uh, thanks again for everybody uh, watching out there. I know we've been uh, a little sporadic this year so far. I hope to pick up uh, the, the rate of delivery of videos going forward here. Uh, we'll see if that plan survives first contact. It's just been a little bit busy. Uh, we're all fine. Liz and I are all fine, uh, and everything's going well for us. But uh, uh, just been a little bit busy there early this, this year. So uh, we'll get back in the saddle soon and uh, see you guys around, potentially at the uh, big NSX uh, Mideast meet this year. We've got that more firmly on the calendar than we have in the past. We feel uh, a little, feel a little guilty having not made it up to that. Um, but uh, we're going to try and make it this year for sure. And then uh, otherwise we'll be around. Uh, so you can look forward to that. You can look forward to uh, NS Expedition midsummer, as well as wherever we get to in the meantime. So till then, thanks again for watching. I'm Richard. This is Lap of the World. We'll see you all in the next video, if not at the track.